Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about Let This Mind Be in You, which is also in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I'm going to kind of dive into it. There's a lot here to unfold, which I won't get into it all because I want to keep this one really brief because I've been making my videos too long. But um, here we go. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. There's a whole lot to this, guys, you know. I mean, Jesus didn't have an identity crisis. He knew who he was. He was the Son of God. He was there at the beginning of the foundation of the world, you know. And that's what he's calling us in to be his sons. But at the same time, he was obedient. He knew there was a plan. He knew there was a purpose. The reason why God let him become in the form of a man. For the salvation of mankind. There was a, a larger plan. And he was obedient to it. Hanging on the cross. You know, horrible form of punishment. Beat to beat. I'm not discounting any of that. Tore up. Mangled. Hor horrific way to die. And to be treated. Defiled, called names. All kind of, you name it. Horrible circumstances, you know. So, but did you ever hear once hear him say, do you know who I am? When he was hanging on the cross. I called on angels to stop it. No, he was obedient. He wasn't looking at the cross, at the circumstances, at all the stuff, the stuff that was going on all around him, the pain, the suffering, the anguish, the torment, the stuff all the vile, demonic stuff. He was looking ahead to the greater cause, which was salvation of mankind. My wife has a really good message, but really it's kind of like, you know, if we went to sell our house, what would they do? They'd appraise it, or people coming to look at it, to buy it. We'd look at my neighbors, how much did the house down the street sell for, the, the area, you know, what... That's what our value of our house is worth. What people are willing to pay for it. God's plan was Jesus. And our value is His Son's life. Messy, for our messy lives. Pure, clean, unadulterated, undefiled Son of God. In whom He was well pleased, He loved but he was willing to offer it for us. And all of our junk and stuff. So, anyhow, but that's where we got to get this mind. I change our mindset, you know? All around us is swirl and stuff. You know? I mean, yeah, it's kind of chaotic. The world is. Turn on the news. A lot of stuff's going on. Probably worse. You know, but I was a kid during Vietnam, and, you know, it wasn't cool to be a soldier. John McCain wasn't cool to go to war. Now it's a little different, sort of, you know. But Iraq war, kind of a mess, you know. Are we, you know. Afghanistan war, kind of a mess, you know. And then the political realm, what a mess. Whether you CNN or Fox, I'm not even going to choose sides or try to choose sides or anything, you know. It's just turning on and it's this mess and that mess and this mess and that mess and everybody's racist. And, well, guess what? Not everybody's racist. I'm 57 years old. I'm a white male and I'm not racist. I sat under a black ministry for almost nine years. One all-black church for almost six years. I got the stink eye from blacks and whites in Dallas. But I didn't care. I was glad to be saved. I wasn't looking at all that. So, 
The world wants to see something different. That's why they're turned off by the church. Because we get involved in all, you know, all this stuff. Instead of standing up and being His glory. Listen to my message. I was turned on YouTube and I was just going to turn it on. And there was a news breaking thing that kind of caught my eye a little bit. And I wanted to hear it. But it takes away from the our mindset of being like Jesus. Because we're spiritual beings, there's a purpose. A thousand can fall to right, ten thousand are left. God is going to get the glory. Businesses could fail, but we could be successful and succeed. And I'm not preaching a prosperity message. Because that might not be where God takes you. That might not be the avenue that He takes you. He might. David was a billionaire, man, after God's own heart. But what about the widow's might? What about the lady that helped Elijah that had two, you know, just a little bit of cake left? Meal, meal for a cake. Couldn't die. Take it to her son and eat it and die. Obedient. So, you know, we got to kind of change our whole mindset, our whole mentality, and I'm, you know, don't even listen to, I'm not even trying to get you to be a clone of me or listen to me or my message. It's not my message. I'm just directional. I'm a directional vessel. That's how God made me. What He made me for. Go to the source. You can go straight to God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And His Word. you got to go through Jesus to get to God. There's a purpose and a plan. And a lot of the church has taken Jesus out of the equation, taken water baptism out of the occasion, and taken holiness out of the equation. I'm just, not all, but a lot. I've been in the charismatic move. I've been in the Pentecostal move. I've been in the holiness or hell move. I've been in denominational moves. I'm telling you, it's a relationship with Him. He's calling Come on out, come on out, come on out from all this junk and mess and stuff that's going on. There's an article on there by News Network or whatever it is right now about GE, which I guess is in the news. I don't know, I just saw it. Their stock dropped like $5 billion because of something that the CEO said. A lot of cash, guys. They're in kind of a little bit of trouble. Now they're blaming the feds. A lot that happened during Obama did. Trump just stuff. Look at my message about economic collapse. You know, I heard the other day in the news, country's worth $11 trillion. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, my second grade math tells me different. Yeah, it's worth $11 trillion, but we're $20 trillion in debt. So guess what? It's a negative. Hello? How are we going to pay it back? When are we going to pay it back? How are we going to pay it back? Are we just going to one day just let it fold and be obscure or whatever? You know, I mean, I, I get, there's a lot of complications. And you could just, your brain could just, explode if you dwell on that stuff. That's not why I'm saying that. I'm saying there's all these fires all around going on all around us and swirls and things as distractions from what God's trying to do. Our mind needs to be on His purpose and His will and being obedient to what He's telling us to do. I'm not talking about walking around blind and dumb. Being in tune to what the reality is, is of it, of reaching souls. Helping people to get a right standing with God. Whether they're in the church or not in the church. However God's leading you and directing you. And what to say, when to say, where to be. And how to be. How to live. We have to live up a holy standard. We have to live up a standard. America's in deep doo-doo, guys. Because we let it get that way. Anything goes. Look at a lot of the ungodly laws. Read between the lines. You know, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole on all of them. I could say, pick one of them. Half of you'll be mad. Half wouldn't be. Half would be glad. Or whatever, you know. Same with the political situation. I'm not going to try to politicize it. Because there's really not a, there's nothing in it. Pray for our leaders. I want them to make the right godly decisions, of course. I watch the news some, too, to try to get something good out of it and pull out and see what the, where our country is and what's going on, kind of. But I don't watch very much of it anymore, just a little bit. Very little. Dive into your Word. Dive into your Bible. 
What's God telling you to do? Because all this stuff is going on all around us. And can, the world could flip tomorrow for all we know. You know, we don't know. But I know who holds tomorrow. I know who holds the key. I know that's Jesus. God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost living in you if you want to. It's a choice, guys. We can shut our minds off. To, un, un, unplug from all this stuff that's going on. It can be messy even in the church. Guys, all these different opinions. There's a, there is a lot of false religious garbage out there. I could name names. People will be mad. I'm not trying to get anything, you know, out of it. I'm not trying to better my position by ripping somebody apart. Ripping them, you know. Prof a prophet is it such a misguided, misused word nowadays because people hide behind that. Most prophets didn't even want the job. Talk to people, everybody's a prophet. Half the people are prophets, you know. If that was the case, this world wouldn't be in such a big mess, guys. Because we'd be pe people would be a lot more attuned to, to, to Christ. There is a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of people that are listening to God. There's a lot of people that are making a stand. And we need to lift them up. Instead of gloating over people's judgment and wrongdoings and stuff and just kind of feeding the fire of CNN and, and even Fox, you know. Just a different side of it, pretty much. Really, when you look at the reality of it, get this mind of Christ, the mind of Christ Jesus, of the obedience piece. What's God telling you to do? He's telling you to lay this stuff down. Lay this, lay down every sin and weight that this so easily besets you. You know, look at the woman caught in adultery. That's kind of one of the things the Lord been dealing with about about exposure. We're the light. We want to expose people, kind of like a dog that pooped on the floor. Look, look what you did. Look what a mess you made. Bad dog. We want to treat people like that, you know, and rub their face in it and just dissect it and twist it all up and focus. And that's where a lot of this racist stuff comes from, you know. Black or white, you pick it up, whether you're black or white. There's people that are black that are racist, people that are white that are racist. I get it. It's a bad... It's not right. But it's going to take Jesus to change that equation. A heart change. A mind change. To realize we're all the same. Created the same. All the same wants, desires, and needs. We all need God. We all need Jesus. We all need that personal relationship with Him. The rest of the stuff is kind of like irrelevant nonsense. Really, honestly. It is. Get your mind out of the gutter. Mine too. Pollutes me too. You know, so... You know, so God told me to plot on the middle. I'm going to start putting out some other messages. And I'm not going to try to be hateful and rude and obnoxious. I'm just going to try to portray. Not portray, but I am going to just tell the truth. But the exposure piece was, man wants to expose things and put people to shame and guilt and condemnation like the devil does. But Jesus, well, can pick, you know, murder's a horrible sin, heinous sin, adultery, that's a bad sin. Well, so is lying and everything else. You know, big, big and little ones, you know. Sin is sin, guys. This country's passed laws that are sinful, okay? Sorry. What did Jesus do to the woman that was caught in adultery? Throwing his hand. First one of you, the people trying to stone him that had no sin, throw, throw the first stone. Nobody had to leave. Why? They all had crap in their lives, junk in their lives, junk in the trunk, whatever, stuff. Things going on. Issues that we all need help with. And he looked up and he said, your accusers are gone, kind of, you know, so I mean, your accusers are gone. I said, I don't accuse, I'm not accusing you either, go and sin no more. Grace is not a free pass, though, to live like hell and do whatever you want. It's 
say, okay, I can, you know. That's why a lot of people don't are turned off from church because they're like, man, why would I want to be hypocritical and claim this, but yet I'm doing this? A peculiar people stand out. City set upon a hill. His glory, guys. Look at some of my messages. You know, it's the hour we're living in is important, guys. Very important. They said it could. It could turn tomorrow, you know. I, I go to a million things. Just even the earth. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think I remember from some of the science shows or whatever. We're spinning 8,000 miles an hour. Gravity, that's what makes gravity. Fast enough that we don't float off the earth. But not so fast that we get crushed like a bug. Then you got the axis. It turns, you know, to make the, the you know some of the different seasons and stuff. Nights and days, make night and day, winter and winter and summer, how's no when to stop, where to stop, all scientists said there's a big magnetic core in the inside. Have they ever been there? No. Do they even know what's down there? No. I don't even have a clue at trying to make a wild guess. Seriously. You know, look at, I mean, just the oil rigs, they Few thousand, few hundred, you know, not even hundreds of miles, just miles down, and it's like, man, man, you got to the lava that's underneath. You don't even know what's past that. You don't even have a clue. Some makes sense, you know. Well, that could stop. The sun could stop. I mean, there's just so many things that could change and flip before this, even before this message is over with, guys. But Jesus is calling and saying, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on from wherever you are. Get your mind off of that stuff and get it steeped in me. What am I showing you? Dig in my word. Follow his word, his guidance. That's what I'm telling you. That's, my dire that's the direction all my messages are going. Find out for yourself. I don't want to be... I love each and every one of y'all, but I want to see you make it. I want to see you stand before God. And get it your own understanding. Let your own mind be in Christ Jesus. That's what I'm saying. That's all. It's all and my whole messages are going to be revolved around. Go to him. Who's your source? You know? I don't I want to hear it from somebody else. I really don't. But I'm the vessel that God created, so I gotta spit it out. I got things to do. I've been all over the country, and I'm not anything great. I've just sent me to different places. Last one was Pennsylvania, 1,800 miles away, for a handful of people, 15 different people we intersected with, and it was awesome. And we really ministered to those people. That's a long way to go, guys. You try it. Get in your car and go, and find the time to do it, and the resources, and the money. And live in the suitcase and stay in motels and it wasn't all cool but I went and it was awesome and when I was in in the Atlantis one guy that the Lord highlighted and told me to go see and it was just exactly like it he didn't tell me it was man or woman but when I got there it was specific and it worked out exactly the way that God told me before I even went for weeks he told me how to, what to do, where to go, and who to see. And I did, and ministered to him for over an hour. They were steeped in a denomination of church that doesn't te teach him about the love of Jesus. Pulled out of the equation. My mind is completely out there. You know, kind of what do we expect? To, you know, when we take that, when we take that out of the church, you know, it's like, it's like all those problems with GE and all this other stuff. You know, we think our economy is so strong and everything. It's the grace of God, guys. But we're not a third world country. Sorry, not anything brilliant we've done. Sorry, it's really not. You know, we put in God we trust on a dollar bill. And think we're some great, godly, God-fearing country. And pass all these ungodly, unholy laws. And inclusive stuff. 
everything goes. Oh, don't say anything about it. Be politically correct. Oh, you're a hate monger or whatever, a racist or just all kinds of different labels. I'm trying to hoodwink God, kind of, you know, in a way. Oh, I'm, it's okay because I stamp God's approval. Many churches are like that. God, 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 God. God's plan was Jesus. Read the Bible. Salvation of mankind was through Jesus. Why did he put the Old Testament and the New Testament on there? Why did he... In the Old Testament, you couldn't... How many people do you know got, got all to God? Really? A handful. Moses and a few other stories. Jesus had to come along and change the whole equation. And we want to take him out of the church. That's what my that's what my messages are heading that direction. Because you got to follow his plan. You got to be obedient. Whatever is going on around you, it's time to put get laser focused on the truth. Dig. What's God showing you? What's Jesus showing you? What's the Holy Ghost showing you? Once you're filled with Him, what's His Word showing you? What's His roadmap doing? Let this mind. Renew your mind. Change your mind. Don't focus brain cells on nonsense stuff. You know, we do it at work sometimes, or we do it with other people, or we do it with our kids, or our spouses, or books we read, or whatever. We just, you know, we only want to, you know, focus on certain things. Sometimes selfish, sometimes not, but it's time to focus on Him. And what he's doing, what he's telling us, and the, the obedience piece that he's telling us to do. I'm going to end it with this. It gave me a lot of dreams, but one of the dreams was John 3.16, and then two weeks later, it was two more scriptures. But John 3.16, he said, Colossians 3.16 was just as important as John 3.16. There was key verses in there. And it talks about how we're teaching and admonishing one another in song and hymn. But earlier on in 3, it talks about how we treat each other. And if somebody has a fault with somebody, they forgive them just like Jesus did. And then he, a couple weeks later, he said, he said Matthew 3.16 and Mark 3.16 were key verses of a different level. Well, Matthew 3.16 is about the baptism of Jesus and how this is my son and him I'm well pleased and the Holy Spirit landed on him, rose up from him. Well, if Jesus had to get baptized, the Son of God, why do we take it out of the church? Why don't we put any importance on that? We want to take what fits for us and pull, you know, I went to this church one time and the pastor used to laugh, I laugh and just say, you don't like that page in the Bible? Tear it out. I get it. You know? But the reason why I'm, I'm not the hellfire and brimstone message and preaching on destruction is because Jesus is saying, come on, come on, come on. It's all around us, guys. Absolutely. And, you know, Ezekiel 3, a righteous man perish, and you don't warn him, and he dies. His blood's on your hands. But if you warn him and he doesn't, and he repents, that's an awesome thing. Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. I mean, it's out there, guys. But where I'm focused on is this mind of Christ and wanting to get people out. What are we doing if we expose all this stuff and point it out and make it a, like CNN or I'm just picking on them, but any of them, and it's like, you have all these pundits and everybody agrees and it's just t trash talking the same trash and the same garbage and the same stuff and reiterating vomit picking it up and twisting it different 13 different ways okay fine great I'm a dog that pooped on the floor now what what do we got guys we gotta have the goods can't have a $600 briefcase and a $1 message what are we going to do? How are we going to get these people out? What are we going to do to, to give them salvation, to teach them about Christ, to show them the love of God, to get them out and established? A, okay. Alan's okay. 
But it's going to take God and Jesus, really, honestly, to stick. You may do all right with it. I'm not knocking it. It, it could be steps. Get this mind of Jesus, the mind of Christ. The obedience. Knowing who you are, not even an identity issue, but at the same time being obedient. Maybe costly a little bit. Might be. I don't know. Might not. So we gotta have we gotta be that glory, that light, and that shining in this dark and, and dying and sinful world and stand up and be accounted worthy. Draw all men to him. Mine's 38 years. i got to use it, guys. That's why I feel this urgency, you know? I've done it all right. Of course not. Any one of the news medias could pick apart my life, and you know what? There's a, a bunch of not-so-good stuff in it. Even after, I've been, even after I was ministering and walking with the Lord. I had a prodigal son experience. I really get the grace piece. I was really mad at God. Over, over nonsense, stuff that I did, mostly, really, honestly, when I look back on it. So, caught up in my own world and swirl and stuff. Lens change. Put on your glasses. Get the mind of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's one of my messages. Where is glory, guys? He wants us to shine. There's just so much to it, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, I just uh, try to keep them short. It just, it just ain't happening, guys. I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'm gonna quit apologizing about it. I'm just gonna do it and hope for the people that listen to it all listen to it all. But anyhow, we love you guys. Appreciate y'all. Um, mind of Christ, obedience, peace. Get it for yourself. Those three things. That's kind of the whole gist of this message. Dig deep. Ask God. Is this guy crazy? What's he talking about? Is this preacher or minister or whatever you want to call me talking about? Is he nuts? Did he lose it? Mentally ill? Twisted? Self-centered? Whatever, you know? I don't care, really. Honestly, I don't. Because I just want to be that vessel that Jesus wants me to be and portray and push forth and propel and get you closer to Him. If I get a black eye out of it or stumble a little bit or whatever, or, you know, 90% of what I say is true. Am I going to err a little bit? Of course. You can correct me if you want. Comment on my channel. Talk about it. You know, I'm not all the way there yet. But I'm working on it. And so are many of you. Let's help. Our brothers and sisters that are hanging a little lower, that are just a little bit outside of the box, or that just aren't quite there, and lift them up instead of judging them and tearing them a new one, ripping them apart. But I get it. There's the truth piece. There is false prophets out there. It's more than annoying to me. It's like, man, wait a minute, hold it, wait a minute. You know? Many, I've seen some churches, huge, huge churches, and it's like, but listening to the, some of their messages, like, it's like, man, it makes you want to throw up. It's puke and vomit. It's self-centered, egotistical, building up you, prosperity mess stuff, calling the move of God, because a bunch of people follow it, tune into it. Well, Dallas Cowboys... Draw sixty thousand people. You know what? They're not. They're not any good. Sorry, God. Sorry, cowboys. The cowboy fans have been very good since nineteen ninety when they Troy Aikman was there and they won the Super Bowl. Kind of up and down, but you know they just really haven't done anything. You know, but it's just a team. It's a game. You know, but still. They draw a huge crowd, but that's not a move of God. A bunch of, bunch of people doesn't kind of, not connotate a move of God. Huge millions of dollars in buildings does not connotate a move of God. It does not. But, we, you know, get our mind in Christ. What's he telling us to do? 
And I get it, I'm not narrow-minded. When we went to Pennsylvania, it took a lot of money to get there. Hotels and gas and food. And, you know, I understand. It wasn't free. I had to have that tool. I'm not narrow-minded and saying you don't have to have it or that that's where the sin lies. Sin's in the love of it and what you do with it. It's not in how much you got or don't got. But anyhow, this has been a really long message, guys. So, you know, I don't know, maybe. I just love you, appreciate you. Um, please tune in to some of my other videos. Comment on them. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we will talk to you real soon. And love you guys. Really do. Mind of Christ. Get it for yourself. Please. And the obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Those three things. So, if you don't take anything away from it, put that. Love you guys. Bye-bye.